Hello everyone and thank you for watching VA TV. We apologize for being a little delayed. My name is Abby Wynn and today I am hosting our great guest from Cristo Rey High School. VA TV is the voice of Vietnamese Americans in the greater Boston area. It is sponsored by Viet Aid, Vietnamese American Initiative for Development. This first half of our one hour weekly program is in English and then we will have a Vietnamese version after. You can watch us live every Wednesday evening from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Channel 9 if you have Comcast and Channel 15 if you have RCN. You can also go on bnntv.org to watch us live and if you happen to miss our live television program, it will be rebroadcast on Sunday at 5 p.m. Monday at 1 p.m. and Tuesday at 11 a.m. Call in at 617-708-3290 if you have any questions. To watch any of our shows, please go on to our home website at vietaid.org. So today we have our two guests, the principal of Cristo Ray, Mr. Jeffrey Thielman, and our guest, Justice Nguyen. So, Prin President, um, Tell me a little bit about the Cristo Rey Boston High School. So Cristo Rey Boston High School is located in Dorchester, mm -hmm. uh, right next to the Savin Hill Tea Stop. Okay. We serve 350 students mm -hmm. uh, from all across the Boston area. Most about 90% of our students are residents of the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. And what's unique about our school is that we have a work study program. All of our students work to earn tuition and uh, to gain professional experience. So we have two corporations, a high school and a staffing agency, and these students are employees of the staffing agency. Uh -huh. We have them work at banks, law firms, insurance companies, all over Greater Boston, and work at about 127 companies. The money they earn from the work-study program pays for the majority of the cost of their education. About 65% of our revenue uh, comes from the work-study program. Companies sign a contract with us, just like they would with a temp agency. Mm -hmm. They pay us a fee for the services of the students, mm -hmm. and that's how they finance their way through, college, through high school. We're a college prep high school, mm -hmm. so our goal is to get every student into the right college. Mm -hmm. We work very hard at uh, preparing them academically and then finding the place where they're going to be most successful. So do the students start working and starting out right at ninth grade? They or? start right in ninth grade, so oh. that, that's the deal. So you start as a 14-year-old ninth, ninth grader, and uh, you start right away. And we do a summer training program for a couple of weeks to get them ready for work. Mm -hmm. We have ongoing coaching on how to work uh, and how to uh, manage different situations at work. We have a staff of five people in our work study office that mm -hmm. uh, visit sites on a frequent basis. They train supervisors. They uh, get to know the students real well. We uh, do a diagnosis of students' abilities, and then we do all sorts of training around things like Excel, um, Word, uh, that sort of thing. But we also spend a lot of time teaching uh, students attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, the key to success in the business world is a positive attitude, yes, um, an ability to deal with different people in different situations, and so we, we coach them on that. And at the same time, we're college prep high school, so they take a rigorous academic program and they get, you know, they get focused on, on going to college and we have a college counseling team that finds the right college for them. So tell me a little bit about your success rate. So we've had, for the past four years, 100% of our seniors have been accepted to four-year colleges and universities. Uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, <clears throat> we've about 90% directly enroll, enroll mm -hmm. in a four-year college upon graduation. Mm -hmm. About the other 10% might go to a two-year college, and might go to the military, it just depends on what the options are. So that's, that's a huge success rate. I'm impressed. We, um, we only serve young people, about 86% of our students qualify for the federal free reduced lunch program. Mm -hmm. So we market to uh, and serve young people from families with limited financial resources. They couldn't afford a traditional Catholic uh, mm -hmm. or private high school. Um, and you know the other, the other good benchmark is about 90% of our corporate sponsors renew every year. And that's a sign that the customers like us and we like them. And, uh, you know, and so we're always looking for new places okay. to place our students. But uh, the 90% uh, uh, rate of, of uh, retention of corporate sponsors is a sign that we're going in the right direction. Okay. Well, why don't you introduce us to one of your students? So Justice Nguyen is a senior at Christ Ray Boston High School. Uh, he works at uh, the Massachusetts AFL-CIO. He's worked at other places. And... Uh, Justice told me on the way uh, here that he's looking forward to graduation, which is just, <laughs> <laughs> just a semester away. There's one semester to go, and he's got to work hard to, to be successful. So I don't know, Justice, why don't you tell about 
Yeah, so <laughs> your experience. tell me your experience so far. How, how was it when you were first getting into ninth grade? Well, um, coming into high school, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, everyone can say that. Um, you know, Chris Ray Boston is a school where they teach you uh, how to work mm -hmm. and they teach you discipline and you know, the summer training. Uh, we started a month early, actually, uh, for summer training because since um, my class, the class of 2014, was the first class of Chris Ray Boston mm. because um, before the school was in North Cambridge Catholic mm -hmm. and they changed to Chris Ray Boston, moved mm -hmm. to Dorchester, changed to Chris Ray Boston. And then that's when everything started. Um, it was a brand new school. We were first class there. And it was great. Um, I met new people, you know, great friends, um, great people there. The teachers are great. The education is great. Um, they always push you. They always want the best for you. Mm -hmm. And the corporate jobs, they're amazing. Um, Tell me some of your corporate jobs. So um, my first job in freshman year was Walsh Brothers Incorporated in Boston. Mm -hmm. They were a construction company. Oh, so um, what did you do for them? Uh, I filed and I did some scanning, some photocopying, I did their mailings. Um, and Great, so everything some that they administration needed. work. Yeah. Yeah. Good, and then sophomore year? Um, sophomore year, I, I worked at Murphy and King Law firm. Mm -hmm. It was a law firm, and um, I did the same thing. Um, just things that they wanted me to do: photo, Photoshop. I mean, photocopy. Yeah. Uh, scan. Um, I inputted some files that they needed me to input, and yeah. And for junior year and senior year, I'm working at Massachusetts AFL CIO, which is a labor union, mm -hmm. and they want me to do mailings, and they give out a scholarship that. Um, they send out to every school, and I have to sort out the scholarship applications and send out the the letters and notices that they need to receive. Yeah. Okay. Um, so tell me, how did you get to the school? Did your parents pick it? Was it? Um, yeah. Okay. My uncle actually knew the dean of administration. Mm -hmm. And he, my uncle recommended me to the school. And you know, I, didn't, I didn't know much about high school, so I just said, okay, I'll give it a try. And you know, I love the school. And I'm, I, ne I don't regret ever not. I, I don't regret picking the school. Good. So you've got one semester left. Yes. So tell me about some of your future plans. My future plans? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, obviously, I want to graduate from college. Mm -hmm. I want to graduate with an MBA in business management. I and can tell you a little bit more about that. <laughs> well, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just graduate with that and get a great, stable job, you know, raise a family. You know, what stuff. makes you want to go into business management? Is it because of some of the, some of the jobs that you've had? Or is it a mentor, teachers? Specific uh, class? I don't know. Um, I just had, I just find, you know, I find business to be really interesting to me and I always want to manage someone and <laughs> be the boss. So I guess I want to, that's why I want to start business management. And my uncle, the one that recommended me to school, what is actually a business management major and he says it's a good job. Okay. Good, good. And so what are some of the colleges that you've had? either applied to, maybe early admission, or? Um, the colleges that I've applied to, uh, Fisher, nice. Newberry, nice. Assumption, um, UMass Boston, Suffolk, and Salem State. And I've heard from four of those schools. I heard, I got accepted into Newberry, Fisher, Assumption, and Elms. Wow, congratulations. And no rejections yet. That, well, that's very good to hear. So um, I know, um, Jeffrey, you said that for the admissions, it's really the kind of greater Boston area. Is there yep. a specific application process that you go through? So the way we do applications at our school is that we, we have about 54 Boston 
uh, public schools, charter schools, Catholic schools, and even a few independent schools that connect with us. Mm -hmm. And we've connected with them over the past several years, building up relationships with, the, with these folks. Um, <clears throat> students come to our school for a shadow day mm -hmm. uh, during the course of the year. They fill out an application. We look for students that have a, a couple of things. One is, the, f the first and the most important thing is the desire to do this program. They've got to be willing to work very hard. As Justice said, the students come into, they start their, their, their freshman year in August. Mm. So in the heat, in the second Monday in August, they're here for a training program. And so they've got to be serious about school. Their school day is longer than, than the public schools. Uh, their school year is longer. We end in late June. Um, we have a very intense uh, freshman program, which Justice went through, in which we remediate some skills students might not have learned by the end of eighth grade. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> we have students that come to the school that struggle in, uh, you know, adding, multiplying, uh, subtracting, dividing fractions, or that are struggling grammar or vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So we do a whole remediation program uh, after school and in study halls on skills students sh should have learned by the end of eighth grade. We have double blocks. Those are two 48-minute periods of math and language arts for all of our students during the freshman year. We have a reading program for students that are behind in reading uh, in, in the freshman year. So it's a real intense program. So first thing you're looking for is, do you want to do the work? Yep. I mean, Justice was a young man who wanted to do the work. I mean, it's clearly when you, when you yeah. see him, you want to do the work. you got you got to be willing to put in the time. Yep. There's, you know, we say to kids, there is no easy route to success. You're not going to make it to college uh, just because you're nice and, and good looking. you you got to work hard. you got to put in the hours. you got to put in the time. That's the only way you're going to be successful. So the second thing <clears throat> we do look at, Things like indicators, uh, attendance in middle school. We look at grades, but we take we, you know we look at grades, and we also look at test scores. Uh, but we don't you know we don't. It's not dispositive. It's not the only thing we're going to look at. We look at more of the, the desire, family income. There's a, there's an income cutoff in our model, so we don't accept people over a certain income uh, amount, which is 75 percent of the median per capita household in, in the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for young people with limited financial resources. Mm -hmm. We protect the model that way. Um, <clears throat> we want to make sure there's some adult support. It varies from family to family. We're not, we're, we, you know, two thirds of our families are not our single parent families. So we're not, uh, we're not asking that the family be intact. We got to have a, an adult we can contact, yeah. an adult that's going to support the child. That's that's critical, um, and we learn about that in the process. So we have about 435 or so eighth graders that will come to the school and do a shadow day and begin the application process. We'll have about 300 who will actually complete it. Um, we accept around 200 students, and then about 80 or so, 75 to 80 students won't choose Cristo Rey, will compete with other fine schools in the mm. city of Boston. But it's a good thing. I think one of the great things about our school is that it's part of the mix of options in the city, and there's a lot of good options in the city. There really are a lot of good, got a good place to go to high school, and uh, students look at our school, they look at other schools, and that's a great process to be a part of. Okay. So, Justice, tell, so Jeffrey said that it's an extended long day. Tell me about your day. What time do you get up to get to school? And then tell me about your periods and the day. Well, I live in Malden, so I have to take the train in the morning. So I have to wake up at 6 and leave my house at 6.30. Um, I take the train, and it takes 45 minutes to get there. And I get there on 7.20. The school day starts at 7.40 and ends at 3.05. OK. Ex on a Monday schedule, we start at 7. We, we start at 740, but we end at 127. Okay. So, and then, so it ends at 127, and then you go to work or oh, work? Oh, no, we go home. <laughs> oh, okay. So when? For work? Yeah. Um, it's, it changed throughout the years. When I was a freshman, I worked on Tuesdays, and some freshmen worked on Fridays. Okay. And sophomores, they work on Thursdays. Gotcha. Juniors work on Wednesdays and seniors work on Tuesdays. Gotcha. And there's one day a month where uh, a grade has to work on a Monday. So if the month starts, Tuesday workers, we work on Mondays in the beginning of the month. Mm -hmm. And then next it goes to um, the juniors, then the sophomores, then the freshmen, and then it repeats. So during your work day, What's that like? So is it like a nine o'clock start? And it depends on the job. My job starts at nine o'clock and ends at four thirty, mm -hmm. and it's a great job. And you have to take yourself to work, right? Yes. Oh, okay. So, uh, what location are you at? Uh, Mass AFL CF Mass AFL CIO is in Malden, so oh, okay. I have the privilege to just come from my house to job straight to work, 
instead of because uh, the students, every student has to come into school for check-in, make sure that they're all dressed, all in dress code, and they're, they're gonna make it, they're gonna make work on time and mm -hmm. for any announcements that the school needs to make, and then they go to work mm. after that. Okay, so during your work day or just throughout your work um, schedules, is there a certain person that becomes your guidance counselor, or your who do you check in with? For so is it your supervisor? Is it a different supervisor? Every oh week no, or? Uh, we have I have one supervisor. Um, Every week, you know, I see her, I come in, I see her, I say, hi, how are you doing? And um, my boss, mm -hmm. uh, the boss of the job, Steve Tolman, mm -hmm. uh, he comes in and sees me often. And he yeah. says hi to me. We all, they're all nice people. And, Great. You know. So it's important to understand, just if I can jump in, the, yeah, sure. <clears throat> the way the work schedule works is four students split a full-time equivalent position. Gotcha. So you have a Tuesday worker, gotcha. a Wednesday worker, a Thursday worker, a Friday worker, then they all rotate a Monday. Gotcha. The Tuesday worker works the first Monday of the mm -hmm. month, the Wednesday worker the second Monday, the Thursday worker the third Monday, and the Friday worker the fourth Monday. When they're at work, so the, all the Tuesday workers have all of their, 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 their classes together. So they don't mm -hmm. miss school for work or work for school. So if you're working on Tuesday, Justice and the seniors and one group of freshmen, that's their day. Tuesday mm -hmm. is their work day. And so <clears throat> they work their jobs nine to five. They don't miss their academic classes. Their colleagues are at work. The teachers have, uh, are teaching other classes, and then when they come back to school, they have all of their classes together. So we fill a full, that's what we sell to the business community. We're gonna fill a full-time equivalent position. We're gonna do, have four students sharing a job. Some employers say, you know, our, I don't have enough supervision, and we don't have enough work for a full team, so we'll take one student, uh, or we'll take two students. It varies from place to place. Gotcha. Um, so, just so tell me about your experience. Have you created a relationship with any of your former employers, like any mentorship, anybody who's been a good advocate for you? Of course. Um, everyone that I've worked with were great. They always talked to me. They always gave me advice about what I needed to do. Good. You know, I, I wish I could see them more often, but sometimes I stop by and I say, how's everything going? They ask me how everything's going. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the work I have now, my job. They're they're great. They always try to support me with everything. They they help me when I need it. And yeah. good. I hope you got some good recommendation letters from them. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> good, good. Um, so tell me how the 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 mission, the vision of of. So <clears throat> there are, we're part of a network of 26, soon to be 28 high schools across the United States that use this, this model. Mm -hmm. the, the first school was started by the Jesuits in Chicago in 1996. Mm -hmm. They did a feasibility study. They found out the high school dropout rate was over 50% on the southwest side mm -hmm. of the city of Chicago. Mexican-American mothers came to focus groups and said they wanted a high school. They asked the Jesuits for a high school. And uh, they said, okay, we can set up a high school. They wanted it to be a small high school. The issue was how, you, how are we going to pay for this high school? That's where they came up with the work-study model. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> the mission has always been uh, serve young people who might not have a chance at this kind of an education, uh, give them a rigorous college prep program academically, get them into college, and then leverage the work-study experience both to raise revenue and to build the character of students. And so one of the things we've seen, I, I worked at the original school in Chicago from 1997 to 2000. Then I came back here and I managed the national scale-up out of an office at Boston College, and uh, for the past five years now I've been the head of this school. So <clears throat> we have now 8,200 students in our schools nationwide, uh, 1,100 employees, and <clears throat> about 1,800 corporate sponsors across the country. So the reason why the model is so successful and attractive is because it works for business. Business mm -hmm. needs to get work done. Mm -hmm. So justice is doing work every day that people need to get done. It's mm -hmm. <clears throat> entry level work where there might be, uh, that isn't being done in some offices for what, one reason or another, but uh, our students go in there and do it. They, they get work done that needs to be done. Um, <clears throat> businesses also like it because they're helping young people who might not have a chance at this kind of an experience. <clears throat> um, and so the mission is being lived out, I think, and I know this actually, both at the school with our students and in the corporate workplaces. I and mean, I've had many, many corporate supervisors over the years who have thanked us for yeah. sending these kids. Because, you know, this is, you know, <clears throat> we, have, we have people that uh, work in the city of Boston 
uh, who you know maybe take the T through Dorchester, or maybe they, they, they have no idea what's in the city. They live in some of the suburbs, and they really appreciate the fact that they get to know fine young people like Justice and his classmates, and they say, wow, this is there's great young people at this school. This is a great mission. Um, and they, they really come to a better understanding of what, you know, of, of, of our city. They come to a better understanding of the potential young people have. We have at graduation every year in our award ceremony where we are, our top five scholars announce where they're going to college. There's corporate sponsors that come all over the place and they, they come from all of the different corporations and they root on our kids. And so I think what we're creating is not just <clears throat> a high school, but we're creating a community where business leaders and our students come together and create a better world. That's great to hear. So tell me as a corporate uh, sponsor or as a prospect okay. corporate sponsor, yeah. how, do, how do I get involved? How, who so do the, I call? So you call me uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, or we have a work study director, Dave Roberts. But if you contact the school, you go to our website, www.cristoreyboston.org. You can learn about us. Um, and we'll, we'll sit down with uh, people that, uh, at all different levels of a company. We, uh, <clears throat> we, always, so we always important to have alignment, we say. There's, mm -hmm. there's really three things that make a corporate partnership work. First, entry-level work to be done. There's mm -hmm. got to be work to be done. Second is supervision. The student has to report to an adult supervisor every day. Um, sometimes we have very well-meaning CEOs who want the program, but th they're very busy. We can't have uh, Justice yeah. go to the CEO's office for advice <laughs> and direction. They've got to go to a supervisor who can give them concrete work to do and who they can check in with on, on a regular basis. And then, <clears throat> you know, uh, the third thing is alignment. It's important to the company. The company wants to bring young people into their, into their business. They want to diversify their workforce. Mm -hmm. They want to expose young people like Justice to the business world. Um, that's, that's what we need. So, we have employers of all different sizes that we talk to. Uh, we, we, we we're always looking for a fit, so it's a conversation. Uh, we meet with supervisors in different places and try to make sure it's a make, make sure it's a good fit. Good. So, Justice, do you feel for the balance between school and work? Is it easy? Is there support from the school? Is it support from work? Um, yeah, it's it's easy. It's actually good that there's a day in between uh, for work. In, in between school because you didn't do your homework the night before, uh. you can do it that work night, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's, it's easy. Um, teachers, they give us a good amount of homework, at least three hours a night, but mm. um, they don't force anything onto you for that work day, mm -hmm. so it's pretty easy to balance everything out. Good, very good. So Justice, of course, this is a Vietnamese TV. Right. Um, so tell um, the community a little bit about your family. Um, you know, I'm I'm assuming you have the same last name as I do. Of course. That um, <laughs> you have ethnicity is Vietnamese. Yes. But tell us about your parents, family. Vietnamese. Well, where are they from? If you were born here, siblings. Um. Yeah. Uh, uh, con con ở trong nhà có mẹ thôi, and con có uh, một chị and con ở uh, mall and má con uh, sun ra ở Việt Nam and con em sun ra ở đây <cười> um, em má con ở trà vinh má con qua đây uh, hơi nhỏ and má con gặp ba con and má con tại con <cười> làm, uh, con với chị um, justice có bao giờ uh, đi về Việt Nam chưa uh, đi về Việt Nam hai lần rồi. Okay. Um, năm này nên đi về lại. Oh, that's good. Uh, xong xong học nên về lại Việt Nam. So mùa hè. Mùa hè về okay. thăm ông ngoại của ngoại. Very nice. Do you um do you have plans um đi đi gặp uh đi travel ở đâu? Đi tới Hà Nội chưa? Đi uh, đi đi tới Sài Gòn thôi. Okay. Sài Gòn trở về. Okay. Very nice. Um, uh, so, thứ sáu là Tết rồi, um, Justice. Oh, yeah, Tết. <laughs> uh, yeah, so ở nhà, um, Justice có celebrate Tết không? Ờ, uh, có. Uh, má, con, uh, má con làm nhiều đồ ăn mm. cho Tết. Um, uh, thứ bảy ở nhà thờ con có, um, có cái tiệc cho Tết nữa. Mm -hmm. Um, hôm năm uh, thứ sáu này con không có ở nhà tại vì con đi UConn đi college visit. Oh good. So con không có ở nhà được. But gọi ông về nhà ông ngoại bà ngoại con ở Việt Nam yeah. chúc Tết rồi. <laughs> um, yeah. 
That's great. So I asked him <laughs> to talk about his um, his family, yeah. mom and older sister, and then we talked about if he's ever visited Vietnam, and he's already visited twice, and he's going has plans for the summer after he's done um, to go visit his grandparents. And we also talked about um, New Year's, Lunar New Year, which is for Vietnamese people, it's called that, and it's Friday. Oh, great. So a large celebration, nice. um, kind of our biggest celebration kind oh, of Christmas. congratulations. Thank you, yeah. thank yeah. you. Um, so, Justice, for future um, prospect students, can you give them some advice, some things that to prep them on, or uh, for parents, future parents? Well, answer my first question first. Well, going into high school, well, especially Crystal Ray Boston, you need to work hard. Um, always, you got to bring on your work on time, you gotta pay attention in class, uh, you always, you have to stay on top of your game, you can't slack off one year. Um, and always, you know, think about your future. Don't just think about you're doing it. Do it for your family, but do it for yourself too. Remember that you have to, you have a future and that you need to make, have a good future. Okay, and then so to, for prospect parents, uh, reasons why they might or should send their kids. Um, you should send your kids to Chris Ray Boston <laughs> because uh, it teaches you a lot. It teaches you a lot of responsibility, a lot of discipline. Um, e even though the teachers do help you with everything that you need, um, they always there to push you. Um, it it teaches your kids. When, when you go to work, it teaches your kids, you know, how the, the work office is, how, what you're supposed to do, how, how you're supposed to act at, you know, your work site, and um, the experience. It's just the experience that is great about this school. Um, so for your classmates, um, do you guys, after your day's work for, for, you know, the Tuesday or the Friday that you go, do you guys write a summary? Do you guys kind of recap or? Um, at the end of each workday, we have to do an online time card where okay. we put in you know, our time slots. And on the, it's a website, so on the bottom of the website, it would have like what you did today and what your accomplishments were. Yeah. And you submit it. Good. Do your supervisors write you a review? Uh, yeah, supervisors can write the review. Do, does that count? <clears throat> well, we, there's a there's a uh, an evaluation that mm -hmm. our national network put together, a form that our national network put together, and it goes to all the supervisors. So we get um, they, the supervisors can write on the time card, so they can make notes on the time card. So uh, if there's an issue, for example, if uh, there has never been an issue with justice, as far as I know, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> if there's an issue with a student. Um, you know, student came back late for lunch, or student uh, didn't complete the assignment, uh, or whatever. We will call the supervisor. The next, it'll come in the time card at the, at the end of the day, yep. electronic time card. Then our staff calls the supervisor the next day to get a better sense of what happens. Then we'll pull the student out of study hall sometimes and try mm. to say, okay, this is what happened at work. Your supervisor said X, Y, and Z happened. That happens. I mean, that's part of part of growing up, part of ex part of management in any business, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we all have employees who. <clears throat> don't always do what we ask. So um, we uh, have a mechanism, that mechanism to do follow-up. Supervisors get to evaluate, they get to comment on the, on the time card, and then the national network has a, super, a, a survey they, they complete. So when you say work study, so the students get paid, so. Well, so here's how it works. So <clears throat> the students are employees okay. of, the, of the work study company. It's, okay. a, it's a corporation, it's a nonprofit corporation. They are, um, it's, it's, a, it's a staffing agency. It is functioned, it functions like a staffing agency. It's legally constituted like a staffing agency. So the students and their parents sign a, an assignment form, what's called an assignment form, and they assign all of their earnings to the school to pay for tuition. Okay. So the cost of a job this year for a team of four working at a, any, a, any entity in Boston is $31,500. So we price it equivalent, it's less than what it would cost a company over 10 months for a full-time equivalent employee in terms of benefits, taxes, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it's $31,500. It's a business expense for the corporation. The corporation pays us on a quarterly or a, or a yearly basis. Um, and, and the students, and the, and the students uh, sign an assignment form. The money comes to the school, and that's how we pay our tuition. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, there's a ta there's the tax codes. If you go over a certain amount of money, then yeah. you, uh, but that we don't hit that limit. So that's how it works. Okay. So what about when students? For when I was a junior senior, I always you know either the babysitting. Uh -huh. um, my first job was Barnes and Nobles, um, uh. and it was just that part time weekend job. Our students able to do that as well would you would you recommend yeah. it or well I mean th there are there are limits on what 14 and 15 year olds can do in terms of the hours of yeah. work and we do remind them of that but we have lots of students who have part-time jobs I mean uh, we have lots of students who work part-time at different places okay. absolutely good, good. Um, so tell me for college prep tell me some of the courses that you've um, taken to help you with the college prep well in freshman year everyone has to take the same courses yeah. except um, if they, every, in the beginning of the year, we take a uh, evaluation, a uh, math test, to see if we are placed in Algebra 1 mm -hmm. or in... Uh, algebra 2. Or Algebra 2. And um, whoever goes to Algebra 1, they continue the year uh, going to Geometry and Algebra 2, then Pre-Calc. And for people that take Algebra 2, they go to Geometry 2, pre-calc in junior year mm -hmm. and AP calculus in senior year. Okay. For me, I took algebra one in freshman year and I did geometry in, um, in sophomore year. Yep. In junior year, I took algebra two, but I wanted to go on AP calculus in senior year. So over the summer, I took a pre-calc course with a fellow classmate. And oh, now at the I'm, school or separate? Uh, I took it at Benjamin Franklin Institute of Technology. Oh, very good. And now I'm in AP Calculus. That's, that's great, good strategy. So all, all of our students, by senior year, every student has to have taken at least one advanced placement or AP okay. course. Yep. And the courses that we offer, we offer AP uh, uh, Spanish in the junior year and then the APs that we offer in the senior year are AP Calculus, AP English, AP Government, AP Biology, and AP Studio Art mm. or Drawing. And so, <clears throat> um, the fact that there's a mandatory advanced placement class that you have to take as well as the exam that goes with it um, with our instructors, it, it amps the rigor in the curriculum in grades 9, 10, 11, uh, 9, 10 and 11. Where you're getting ready for that level of work because the next level of work beyond that is college. We mm -hmm. want them to be ready for college. Mm -hmm. So are <coughs> most of your students like just as geared towards business, business admin, business management oh, because know. of the work <laughs> study or are there? What would you say? I mean, you're, you're better at I, I think uh, they're, they want to go in a variety of careers. Yeah. That's yeah, my it's sense. a variety. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of friends that want to do uh, medical stuff, okay. uh, criminal justice, business, um, just a variety of occupations that they want to do. It's just not. So do Such you, a, for job selection, mm -hmm. how does that job selection go? Is it some of what their interest is, some of what you guys feel? It's a, it's a combination of things. It's, we, we, we assess what they're interested in in terms of the field, but yep. you know, if, if you're gonna work in a law firm, whether you work in a law firm or the AFL-CIO or whether you work at a bank, you're oftentimes doing the same kind of entry-level work. So we're kind of, we, we do a, a fairly deep dive when we get a sponsor to understand the culture of the place in which they're gonna work. You know, what's it like? What's the supervisor like? What's the culture of the office? Um, mm -hmm. And then we go back and look at the students and figure out, okay, who's gonna fit into this operation? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, <clears throat> AFL-CIO, a labor union is a little bit different than a downtown Boston law firm. And so there's a certain, you know, we have to look at the right, right student for the right place. Um, then, we, then we do find out about interest. So we, do, we have students that come to us all the time. We have a number of jobs in the medical field in, in the city. And so we have a lot of students that come to us and say, I really want to get involved in the medical field, Mr. Thielman, or I, wa I, wa I would love to work in a hospital, or I, my aunt's a nurse and I'd like to be a nurse. So we try to make that possible. We try to give them the opportunity to work actually in, in that kind of an establishment so they have the experience. Um, and they, they can kind of think about it, whether or not this is the career they want to go into. Some students will find a job their freshman year and work at it all four years. Oh, um, so have, that's a... <clears throat> that's an option. option. We have students, for example, at TJX, right? We have students yeah. that work at TJX Corporation in, in uh, Framingham. And um, we have some students that work there all four years. And they know the place, they love it, they get the, they get the feel good. of the place. Some students have gone and worked in different places, worked in two or three or four places. It varies from, from student to student. The most important thing is that, you know, <clears throat> wherever they are, they're getting an authentic experience of work. They could be fired if they don't perform. You know, they could get a review that isn't favorable. It's an authentic experience of work. 
and they have to hold the job in order to stay at the school. Mm. So they understand that there's a lot on the line. I'll tell you one story from my days when I was with the National Network uh, overseeing the startup of new schools. I went, uh, I was at a lunch table at a school in, Cle in Cleveland and I said to a student, I said, what's the difference between school and work for you? Uh, and he said, well, at work, you got to get it right the first time. And you know, as an educator, it's hard to hear that because you're like, oh my goodness, how can we not do that in school? But uh, that's, that's, the, that's, that's what the kids, that's, the, that's the, 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 the challenge that kids face every day at work. They've got to meet, they've got to meet high expectations. So Justin has said earlier that the students go into school first on a work day right. and check in, you know, if you're dressed properly right. um, and to make sure that they're, they get to work on time. So these students that are working at TJX. So we have a van that takes students out to TJX. So okay. we have uh, about 75% of our students can get to their jobs by way of public transportation. The subway stop, the red line, uh, the Ashmont trains, uh, Savin Hill stop is right across from our school. Okay. So 75% of our students come to school, uh, check in, Get, we kind of do a make an attitude check, make sure they're ready to go, yeah. make sure they had something to eat, make sure they're they're focused on what they have to do today. They put aside any issues they may have, and they do what adults do, right? They go to work and and, and suck and, it up and go to suck work. Suck it up and go to work. <laughs> yeah, to get it get it get it done. So, you know, seventy-five percent of them get on the subway stop in front, yeah. and they take the subway to jobs within the city of Boston, gotcha. or they might take a subway to a bus. Gotcha. We got about twenty-five percent of our kids who take a van. A van. So we have van drivers that drive kids uh, to south, to uh, as far as south as Canton and Brockton. Okay. Uh, as far west is Framingham and Natick, where we have okay. jobs out there. Uh, north, we have some jobs in Peabody. And then we have a van uh, that's, we call it our inside van that gets students to places that are not easy to get to by T, and they've got to be there by certain hours, so. Okay, so we've got just a few minutes left. Um, Jeffrey, why don't, in closing, you let the community know um, how they can get in touch and what steps there are if they have students that uh, have, they have uh, kids that want to become students. Absolutely. So if you're, if you're a parent interested in Christa Ray Boston High School or a student interested in Christa Ray Boston High School, go to our website, www.christaraybostonorg If you're an eighth grader in the city of Boston, you can talk to your eighth grade counselor or uh, your principal or guidance counselor and ask them about Christa Ray Boston High School. Chances are they know the school, uh, they can get you an application. The application process begins with a shadow day, a day at the school. And we have several, it's, it's three or four days a week now where students can come. Uh, they get a few, a, a day off from uh, eighth grade, but they come and take a look at ninth grade and they walk, they go around with other freshmen, other potential freshmen and uh, get interviewed. They watch classes, they get a feel for the place. If you're interested in being a corporate sponsor, go to our website, there's information on it, and uh, we'd love to have you. Okay, so just as, um chỉ còn lại like, một phút nữa. So justice nói cho mấy người quý vị, um, um, justice uh, help us out and um, and mấy người mà có mấy con nít mà muốn đi tới cái trường này, cái trường ở đâu? Um, uh, con đi học ở Chris Ray Boston High School in Dorchester, Massachusetts, uh, Seven Hill, Seven Hill Station. Um, Vâng qua đường trường right at all. Okay. Um, em, em, so em học ở đó từ lớp 9 tới lớp 12. Yeah, lớp 9 tới lớp 12. And then em học 4 ngày and then đi làm 1 ngày. Yeah. Phải không? Okay, good. Um, and then em muốn nói, um, nói um, chúc mừng quý vị không? Chúc mừng Tết cho quý vị. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Chúc mừng năm mới, uh, quý vị uh, có năm vui vẻ, dồi uh, dào sức khỏe. <laughs> Very good. So thank you everybody for watching. Um, we hope Justice and Jeffrey and I wish everybody a happy uh, Lunar New Year. Um, chúc mừng năm mới, quý vị. Thank you. Have a good night.